three $1,000 portfolios, one for every type of investor, from dividends and long-term investing to one that could 10x your money. Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, ready to make 2023 the year you make your money work for you. But since no two investors have the same goals, the same needs, I'm gonna show you three $1,000 portfolios, each with different goals to get you started. One of these portfolios is going to change your life. Our first $1,000 portfolio for dividend investing, I'm calling the Billy Bean Portfolio. Nation, one of the most frequent complaints I hear about dividend stocks and trying to pay your bills with dividends is, it is impossible for a regular person to save the millions of dollars you need to live off dividends. Look at it this way, even on my favorite dividend ETF, the Schwab US Dividend Equity Fund, ticker SCHD, with its 3.1% dividend yield, you would need to invest over $1.1 million just to earn $3,000 a month in dividends. That's $3,000 a month, $36,000 a year, divided by the dividend yield of 3.14%. Most people just don't have $1.1 million in a portfolio, and if they do, they're not worried about $3,000 a month. So you need to do more with less. You need a Billy Bean. Bean, played by Brad Pitt in the movie Moneyball, was the general manager of the Oakland A's. Starting the 2002 series, the A's were coming off a devastating defeat to the Yankees in the league series of the year before, and were about to lose three of their best players. But to fill that gap left by its only three really top-level players, Bean had a budget of just $41 million, the third lowest in Major League Baseball. In fact, it was less than a third of the $126 million payroll the New York had to attract talent. Bean and the A's couldn't afford top talent. They couldn't afford minor league talent, and they sure as hell weren't enticing anyone with the prospect of moving to Oakland, where the best the nickname the city could come up with was the town. In short, if Bean wanted to compete in the big leagues, he would have to get creative. He would have to do more with less. With the help of Jonah Hill, okay, with the help of a Yale economics grad, Peter Brand, Bean put together a miracle that year, tying the Yankees with 103 winning games, the second highest win percentage in the major leagues. Folks, unless you have a Yankees-sized portfolio to live off your dividends, you're gonna have to do more with less. The first dividend stock we'll do that with is WP Carry, ticker WPC, one of my favorite real estate stocks, and a solid 5.4% dividend yield. WPC is a $17 billion real estate investment trust, a REIT with great diversification by property type. In fact, pretty evenly spread here across industrial, warehouse, office, and retail space. Now, most of the portfolio is in the U.S., though it does hold over 35% of the properties in Europe, which gives a great geographical diversification as well. And that diversification is really why I like WPC for one of my favorite REIT stocks here. Against the other real estate stocks I follow, only WP Carry has that exposure to different property types that, that I believe can really bring the risk down in your portfolio. The company collects over $1.1 billion in annualized base rent and books 98% occupancy over 131 million square feet across more than 1,100 properties. WP Carry has topped expectations for funds from operations over the last four quarters, reporting an FFO of $5.33 over the last year. So here trading only about 16 times on that price to FFO basis, which is a pretty good value against the 18 times FFO you see across all REITs. We'll get right back to that list, but with each of these portfolios, I wanna help you understand if the strategy is gonna be right for you. What are the goals of each portfolio and who's it right for? For this dividend portfolio, the goal is gonna to be to find those strong dividend stocks around 5% dividend yield and a long-term price appreciation. Now you're gonna to wanna to reinvest those dividends, buying more shares for as long as you can to really build that portfolio up until you're living off the dividends. Dividend investing is one of the most popular themes on the channel and for good reason. This portfolio is perfect for those of you that want that guarantee that you're always gonna have cash coming into your account, cash dividends that are gonna be there when you need them. Dividend investing is also one of the best ways to invest because you're gonna be motivated to keep saving and investing your money every time you see that dividend check hit the account. Back to our $1,000 dividend portfolio though, with shares of NRG Energy, ticker NRG, and it's 4.4% dividend, nearly three times the average yield in the stock market. Now, this company is one of the largest energy producers in the US with over six million residential customers and 14 gigawatts of generation across electricity and natural gas. Now, even though this is an independent provider, it still operates in that protected, regulated market for electric and natural gas, so cash flows are extremely consistent. That's helped management commit to a constant dividend growth while still being able to grow the company and the share price as well. The recent acquisition of Direct Energy is expected to produce over $300 million in savings and drive part of that strategic growth initiative, growing the dual fuel business and streamlining production. 
and that should result in even stronger cash flows and higher dividends to come. The acquisition has already come through in higher revenue, doubling sales in the most recent quarter and taking the three-year annual rate to 65%, well over the peer average. Overall, it's just one of the best dividends you'll find in a very stable stock. Now here, I wanna reveal what makes a great dividend stock to look for, but for more detail, I'm gonna link in the description below a video with a complete guide on how to live off your dividends, so make sure you check that out. Whenever I'm looking for dividend stocks, one of the most critical points to watch for is that it's got a history of increasing its payouts and no dividend cuts. Fortunately, this is also one of the easiest things to find. I can go here to the historical data tab for NRG here in Yahoo, change the time period of five years and show dividends only. Here, I see the company has regularly increased its dividend from just three cents a share in 2018 to 35 cents a share last year. And before buying a dividend stock though, you also wanna to go to the statistics page and scroll down to the dividend information. Here, you wanna make sure you look at the payout ratio and that it's not over 60 or 80%. Now, that's the percentage of profits the company is paying out as dividends, and it's an important measure of that dividend sustainability. Our third stock in the $1,000 dividend portfolio is gonna be an ETF, a fund spreading your money across hundreds of stocks for less risk, but to keep that dividend yield. And for this, I'm going with my favorite dividend fund, the Schwab US Equity Dividend ETF, ticker SCHD. The Schwab ETF holds shares of the 100 highest paying dividend payers within the large cap US market and includes a lot of those faster growing tech stocks as well. Tech makes up 20% of the fund, giving it return plus that higher 3.4% dividend yield. And the fund is covering all its bases here with Coke and Pepsi, but also has some dividend stocks you might not find in the other funds like Cisco Systems and Broadcom. Now, okay, I know that 3% dividend yield probably isn't going to do it for a lot of you out there. So if you want, you can also substitute the SCHD with this JP Morgan Equity Premium ETF, ticker JEPI. Now this fund holds stocks in the stock market index, the S&P 500, and then sells covered calls against those each month to provide a very high 10.6% dividend yield. Now you probably won't get the price return that you would from something like the SCHD, but for a pure dividend return fund, this one beats a lot of those other favorites like the QYLD and won't lose your money. What I'm calling the long-term freedom portfolio is next, but why do you even need a portfolio goal like this? Why focus on dividend stocks or, or long-term stocks or those 10X growth portfolios that I'll show you later? Why not just pick individual stocks you like and build your portfolio around that? Well, let me ask you another question. Would you leave for a cross-country trip without knowing how you were gonna get there? Hell no, you wouldn't. If you wanna end up a thousand miles somewhere else, you better think about how you're gonna get there. What way is gonna be the fastest, the easiest, the less expensive? So then why would you set off to meet your investing goals, which are even more important here, without understanding which stocks are gonna get you there the fastest, the easiest, which are the best stocks for you? And that's why I wanted to give you these three different portfolios, three different paths to your destination. Some people are gonna need the income and the motivation from dividend stocks, seeing those checks hit their account every month. Some investors are gonna want that slow and steady path to financial freedom, or are gonna be willing to put in that work to guarantee they get there safely. While others here, they're just up for a little bit more risk. They're ready to change their life and find the next Apple or Amazon or Netflix. And that's what this channel is about, has always been about, about you and what you need. Now I promise I'm gonna get back to our $1,000 portfolios, but all you out there know, I gotta send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Like I said, our next group of stocks is what I'm calling the long-term freedom portfolio because that's what investing is really about, right? Freedom. Freedom from having to work a job you hate. Freedom to choose your own path rather than being at the mercy of the dollar. But freedom does not happen overnight. You have to work at it. In fact, if you think about it, your financial freedom is a lot like the Shawshank Redemption. In the movie, one of the few that is just as good as the book, Andy Dufresne is wrongly convicted of murdering his wife and her lover. Sentenced to life in prison and determined to get busy living or get busy dying, he plans his escape chipping away at the 50-year-old prison wall in his cell with a rock hammer that's more like a spoon than a hammer. It took him 17 years, 6,205 days chipping away inch by inch to earn his freedom. Nation, you know I love you, but it's time for a little tough love. I know over the last few years here on YouTube, on TikTok, everywhere, you've been told riches are just within your grasp. Just reach out your hands and put your money in some stocks that are gonna shoot the moon within days making you independently wealthy. We saw how well that strategy works last year. Now I know it's not what you wanna hear it. I hate to be the negative Nancy here, but just like Andy, 
You have to earn that freedom with time. And that is our long-term freedom portfolio. The first stock we're gonna do that with here is one of my favorite forever stocks, Freeport McMoran, ticker FCX. FCX is a global leader in copper and gold mining with a low cost operations in South America and Indonesia, but also more importantly, significant mining in the US as well. Despite lower metals prices recently, Freeport is doing everything right from increased production to higher operating margins and even decreasing debt. Now, copper and some of the other industrial metals the company mines are gonna sell off in a recession, but we could be just years away from a serious shortage in copper and higher prices. Electric vehicles alone use more than three times the amount of copper compared to traditional cars. Copper is also a major component of renewable energy delivery along with construction. In fact, here in estimates by the International Energy Agency, we see copper production estimates here on the far right in blue with the demand estimates in red and a deficit by 2024. Within just one year, we will not be mining enough copper to fulfill that demand and that deficit is just gonna keep growing. Our shares of FCX are down 26% from the commodities boom last year and are now trading for 14 times on a price to earnings basis. Now that's above the low we saw last year, but still well under valuations of 17 times for Southern Copper, which I also like in that longer term copper demand story. Freeport has a strong balance sheet and is one of my favorite stocks in this idea of that long-term, big picture investing. The goal of this long-term portfolio is gonna be a group of stocks in those big picture themes that won't let you down. You're investing a little each month across a handful of maybe 10 or 15 stocks, high quality companies that you don't have to worry about. And next to dividend investing, this kind of a buy and hold strategy is the lowest stress way to make your money grow. It's great for investors that just want to put their money to work for those long-term goals, but don't want the risk or the research that goes into a 10X portfolio that I'll show you later. Another one of my favorite forever stocks for our $1,000 long-term portfolio, shares of Amazon, ticker AMZN. Amazon dominates in its two core markets with nearly 60% of the US e-commerce market, a number no other company comes even close to matching. Amazon also controls a third of the global market for cloud services, 50% more than its next largest competitor. And when you've got that kind of market control, it's just an advantage the company is gonna be able to use across all its products and services. Revenue has doubled over the last three years to $500 billion and is expected to hit nearly 600 billion this year. So even if it's not the growth stock darling it was just a decade ago, it's still an investment that can continue to grow and never let you down. And I think the market is underestimating shares of Amazon. For a share of Amazon, you're basically just paying for the valuation on that core e-commerce platform. It's Amazon cloud services and the ad revenue, but you're also getting all this Alexa venture investments as well in AI, voice, other tech innovations. But where I've always had trouble recommending Amazon because of that expensive valuation, after the recent sell-off, it's now down to a place I've never seen it before. Shares trade for just 1.7 times on a price to sales basis, which is less than half the 2020 valuation. Now finding more of these long-term stocks for your portfolio is really about spotting the biggest trends over the next decade and the companies that are gonna benefit from that. I'm gonna highlight how to do that here, but check out the video I'll link in the description below and five more forever stocks you can hold in your portfolio. First here, you're gonna be looking for a long-term trend supporting the entire industry. It's one of the reasons why even though oil stocks have made us a lot of money lately, and I like energy stocks for the next few years, but why you won't find any of them on this list. We just don't know what those longer-term trends are for the industry. Instead here, I'm looking for industries like copper, e-commerce, and lending. There will always be disruption in any industry, but it's in groups like these with that upward trend from electrification, online usage, and economic growth that is just gonna help drive all the stocks in that industry. And here, once we've found an industry with those positive upward trends, I wanna find the companies with a competitive advantage in the group. The company has to be able to do something few others in its industry are doing, something that's using to leverage that industry growth into even higher returns. That's gonna be giving it that staying power, even when the economy tumbles and bear markets over those decades. Finally here for those reliable buy and hold stocks, you have to come back to valuation. Even a good company within a strong industry trend, it's gonna lose your money if the stock is just ridiculously expensive. For our third stock in the $1,000 long-term portfolio, I'm keeping with that ETF diversification idea with the Vanguard 500 Index Fund, ticker VOO. This Vanguard fund is the stock market with the 500 largest companies based in the United States tracking that S&P 500 index. It gives you exposure to each of the 11 stock sectors along with the largest and most popular stocks like Apple, Microsoft and Amazon. If you're looking for stable, long-term returns, 
there is nothing wrong with just owning the market. Like the man says, don't try to beat the market, just be the market. I'll reveal that 10x portfolio next with some great stock ideas, but first, I wanna personally invite you to get the weekly bow tie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community. So look for that sign up link below. Our third portfolio is the one I'm most excited about, the 10X portfolio, turning just a few thousand dollars into a down payment or retirement of your dreams. But to 10X your money, you're gonna need to find something special. You need the very best companies. You need companies like Netflix, which started as a DVD rental service that, that went from 64 cents a share shortly after the IPO in 2002 to $33 each in 10 years, and then to $300 a share in the next 10. Folks, this is more than just investing in the hot stocks that everyone is talking about. In fact, once everyone is talking about a stock, there's usually not much left for new investors. Just look at meme darling GameStop. If you weren't in before the December boom in 2020, you're likely losing money at this point. Finding these 10X stocks means you need a Ray Kroc. In 1954, Kroc is selling milkshake machines across the country. It's a living, but he wants more. Ray notices one particular drive-in in San Bernardino is ordering a lot of machines, like enough milkshakes to choke a mukbang YouTuber on his best day. That single drive-in is called McDonald's after its two brother owners. Ray immediately notices the efficient systems the brothers have set up and the work ethic of the employees. He sees something special in this company. Kroc then convinces the brothers to let him franchise the business, opening McDonald's first in Illinois and then expanding from there. And you probably know the rest of the story. From that one store, McDonald's is now a $193 billion colossus. All because a milkshake machine salesman recognized a great company. Nation, to 10X your money, that is what you need to do. Recognize a handful of great companies from the 5,000 plus traded in the stock market. And here, I'm gonna show you how to do that and get you started with three great stocks. Our first stock isn't gonna surprise a lot of you out there in the nation. I've been talking about SoFi Technologies, ticker SOFI since early last year. Okay, first though, I know you're asking, isn't this stock down hard from the peak of 2021? Yes, okay, every growth stock has crashed over the last year, but just because the stock price is down doesn't mean this isn't still a growth company. SoFi started as an online student loan refinance platform, but has evolved into a full service FinTech wallet, and I believe is one of the best positioned for that future of digital banking. Where other FinTech players like PayPal and Upstart are still trying to bring on their products and services, SoFi already has a lead in everything finance, from insurance to credit, investing, and banking. That is a big part of why I've been buying the shares over the last year, the company's competitive advantage in digital banking. Because it has that bank charter from its acquisition of Golden Pacific Bancor, it's able to offer these services like checking and savings that a lot of its fintech competitors just can't provide. This really does put SoFi way ahead of the competition, and the company is gonna be able to leverage that for growth. The company reported 61% growth in new members last quarter to 4.7 million, and while the percentage increase is slowing, that's still amazing growth at that scale. To put that into perspective, the company's closest competitor, Ally Financial, grew its customer basis by just 12% last year. SoFi has also reached 124 million accounts on its Galileo payments processing platform in just three years and is on track to grow revenue by 51% to $1.5 billion. And I think where even the skeptics start to come around is if you look at SoFi as a bank stock, which is a little easier to value rather than some growth stock, and comparing SoFi against the major banks on a price to book value of assets and revenue growth, it's just a no brainer. SoFi trades for just 0.84 times book value. And remember that price to book, that's the valuation measure you wanna use for banks because they keep all their assets and liabilities updated on the balance sheet. Now, on a price to book basis, JP Morgan is almost twice as expensive at 1.49 times, despite really having no revenue growth to speak of. Even First Republic, one of the fastest growing banks, only has 17% growth rate versus 50% plus for SoFi. So just on some rough estimates, a book value of assets has grown at a 40% annual pace over the last three years. Even if that slows to average 20% over the next 10 years, and on a reasonable 1.2 times book valuation, shares here could be worth $40 a share each for a nearly 10x return on a very conservative estimate. Now the goal here of this 10x portfolio is really dig deep into that analysis to find those five or 10 companies changing the future. You do wanna keep it to no more than about 10 here because you wanna limit yourself only to the highest confidence stocks with the biggest upside. 
plus having more than 10 is really gonna spread out your money. So, so that even if two or three really take off, your entire portfolio might not move much. Here, you're aiming for a 25% annual return. That's 10 times your money in 10 years or less. But understand, this is gonna take more research on your part. You can't just rely on some Yahoo in a bow tie or anyone else here on YouTube to feed you your stock picks. Put in the work, study the companies to find those 10X movers and you will be rewarded. Our next growth stock in the $1,000 10X portfolio, Teladoc Health, ticker TDOC. Now, this is another one I started buying January last year after the massive crash from the 2021 price. And, and I know a lot of you out there are just gonna look at the stock chart here and immediately write this one off. Even on a cost basis of $35 a share, I'm still down 29% on 2,200 shares, but this is still the same great growth company and it's one of my favorite big theme stocks. Teladoc is a global leader in virtual healthcare with a provider network that covers 76 million US patients and a billion member data points from traditional telehealth to remote monitoring and next generation primary care. Now, obviously the pandemic years were huge here, like five years of growth all in one, but company was already growing at a solid rate before that. Membership growth has grown 33% annually since 2018, and the company booked over 18 million patient visits in the last four quarters. Even on the slowdown though, revenue still grew at 18% last year to $2.4 billion, and 80% of that is from recurring services. Longer term, telehealth and virtual care is the future, and Teladoc is the clear leader in this industry. And of course, we're just in 2021, Teladoc was the poster child for those expensive growth stocks, the sell-off has taken this one into really attractive territory. Teladoc now trades for just 1.8 times on a price to sales basis, but it's still growing revenue by double digits a year. So here, even on a slow down pace of revenue growth, Teladoc gets to $12 billion in revenue within 10 years. And on a conservative three and a half times sales valuation, that is a $42 billion company for a 10.9 times return on the current price. Finding these best 10X growth stocks is gonna start the same way as those long-term stocks and looking for those long-term growth trends, which industries have the strongest growth over the next 20 or 30 years. It's in these industries like virtual healthcare, web 3.0 and FinTech that are really changing our lives and even the also ran stocks are gonna post strong returns. But we don't want the laggards, even in those growth trends. So we're gonna be looking for companies dominating those industries. Here, I'm looking for stocks with a market position well above the next largest competitor or, or some other defensible advantage over its peers. And finally, because of the economy, because a lot of these growth stocks are on shaky ground right now, I'm looking for companies with the balance sheet to survive. And that means enough balance sheet cash and as little debt as possible to survive any kind of economic storm until the industry trends return. Give these stocks a while though and they're gonna use that market position to grow your portfolio like no other stocks can. While this last pick in our $1,000 10X portfolio might not boom higher, it will give you a solid return with much less risk the Vanguard Growth Index Fund, ticker VUG. Growth ETFs invest in companies with the sales and earnings growth to be the next Amazon or Apple, the companies changing the world in which we live and rewarding shareholders with massive returns. That means it's usually gonna be mostly stocks in technology, biotech, and the internet here because those are the sectors where we see the fastest growth. Don't expect much dividends though from these. These companies are reinvesting every penny to grow, not returning their cash to shareholders. The Vanguard ETF does pay a 0.6% dividend yield. Not much to talk about, but about the best you'll find among growth funds. The fund holds shares of 260 companies, the largest growth companies based in the United States. And you see that focus here with 48% of the fund in tech stocks, which is gonna include all those internet and social media stocks. Looking at these stocks, it's a who's who of tech growth with Apple, Microsoft, and Tesla. The Vanguard Growth Fund has returned 83% over the last five years, even after the crash last year, and charges a rock bottom 0.04% expense ratio. Click on the video to the right for the nine stocks that could save your life. Nine stocks you can't afford to miss. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.